what if you could take this character and this character and put them into a tropical oasis like this? That is awesome. But what if I wanted to take the outfit from this girl and apply it to this girl? Well, in that case, I might end up with something like this. I gotta say, that is a super accurate one-to-one -one copy of this outfit onto this model. Everything from expression adjustment to image stylization, recently I found myself using design more than any other image editing tool. The UI is super convenient to generate any type of image that you need and make any sort of modifications for your projects. In this one, I'm gonna show you my favorite use cases for design so that you understand why it's better than a lot of the other tools out there. Thanks to design for sponsoring today's video. First, let's talk about adding multiple characters into a scene. Okay, so here are two of my AI influencer accounts. This one, Sierra, this one has 141,000 followers. And then this is a newer one, this is uh, Kira, and this one only has 1,500 followers. And so what I wanna do in this case is I wanna create a collaboration between these two influencers, which scrolling through the content here on the Sierra account, this one actually did okay, and this was a similar video where um, Kira and Sierra were in this little fantasy hot tub type of thing. So I'm gonna try to do something similar to this. And so now coming into design, I'm gonna click new project. I'll have my affiliate link for design down in the description below if you want to try it out and follow along. In any case here, I'm gonna choose my aspect ratio, which will be nine by 16 and click apply. So now I wanna come over to this character button, come up to generate images, and now choose a character. At this point, you can scroll through all of your characters. As we can see, I have Sierra and Kira built into this. And so you can, of course, create all of your own characters by clicking this build your character button. You upload some reference images. And then from that point, you can start using that character in all of your images. So in this case, I'm gonna select Kira. And now I'll paste my prompt here, which is basically saying there's two women in this little natural pool waterfall type of thing. And now I can just come down and click generate. I'll usually do this a few times just so I have a few different options to choose from. And so here are some of the options that we ended up with. Now, not all of them are going to be super accurate with the right facial details. But again, that's why I like to click the button a handful of times just so I have a few options to choose from. So in the end, I think I like this one the best. And so now I'm just gonna come down here and click place on canvas. And now I can start working with this image. And so the first thing we need to do here is that, you know, it's obviously duplicated Kira two times. And so we need to replace one of these characters with Sierra. So now I'm just gonna come back to characters. And this time we're gonna choose insert character. And so now all I have to do is trace around one of these characters. I'll go ahead and replace the blonde Kira right here. After selecting the character, I'm going to click this button and now I can choose Sierra. And I'll go ahead and just paste the same exact prompt and let's see what we get. Okay, and so after doing that, we have some different options here. I think I like this one the best. So I'll go ahead and place this new one on the canvas. So now at this point, we just have to touch it up a bit more. As you can see, there's some obvious issues with the hands here. So at this point, I'm gonna come down to the AI editor and we'll come right here to hand repair. And so now I can just go ahead and circle this area with the hands and click generate. And so just like before, we're gonna have a few options here. I think out of these, I like this one the best. Even though there are still some obvious problems here, I'm just going to place this one on the canvas and then I'm gonna do it again and see if we can refine this a bit further. Okay, and after doing that, I think I like this one the best right here. So we'll go ahead and work with this. If you look closely, there's still too many fingers here. So I'll just go ahead and circle this area one more time and see if we can get this patched up once and for all. Another thing to note here is that you can switch this over to layers just like Photoshop. So you can bring any of your previous layers up to the top, just in case for whatever reason, if you need to go back to one of your previous layers, all of your layers are right here. All right, and so after doing that, we ended up with this one right here. And so I think we finally got the hand issue figured out on that one, so I'll go ahead and use this. Now at this point, you can go ahead and download the image, or if you just wanna convert this into a video straight away, you can click this little AI video button, 
And here you can choose between these various video models. In this case, I wanna get the best quality possible. So I'm gonna choose Kling 1.6 Pro. And now I'll come paste my video prompt here and we'll see what happens with that. Okay, so after waiting for that, here is what we ended up with right here. And overall, this came out pretty good, although we are losing Kira's face right here. She kind of becomes a different person. Now, honestly, you would burn through your credits pretty quickly if you're just trying to kind of experiment. And so here are three better options. Number one, you can come directly into Kling. And so here I ran that same exact image directly inside of Kling. And if you're trying to experiment and re-roll the clip a handful of times, this is going to be slightly cheaper. In addition to the fact that you get access to these other models, including Kling 2.0, which is a super powerful model and has really good prompt adherence. But the downside is Kling is one of the most expensive video gen tools. So if you're looking for a cheaper alternative, you might want to use Runway. So this is Runway right here. And the good thing about Runway is that it has an unlimited plan. So you can literally create as much as you want without ever running out of credits. If you come down here, you can choose between these different models. Generally, you're gonna choose between Gen 4 Turbo and Gen 4. Gen 4 Turbo is quite fast and it does have pretty good results. For example, this is the output from Gen 4 Turbo. The downside, however, is that Runway is a bit more censored, so I had to modify my prompt four times before it would actually accept the prompt. Plus, the prompt adherence and the quality is not going to be quite as good as Kling. The next option here is to use free open source tools like this one. This is called Framepack, and this is a 100% free and uncensored open source tool that creates pretty decent quality clips. So overall, Kling is gonna have the best quality and it's quite fast, but the downside is that Kling is the most expensive. Runway is gonna give you decent quality, it's unlimited, and it's quite fast if you're using the turbo model. The problem is you could run into censorship issues and it's just not gonna be quite as good as Kling. With Framepack, it's completely free and uncensored. It's gonna give you pretty decent quality. Of course, it's also unlimited since you're using your own machine. But of course, the downside is that it's extremely slow. You can only run one video at a time and you are gonna to have to have a pretty powerful machine to run it. For example, my computer has an NVIDIA 4090 with 16 gigs of VRAM, and I didn't time it exactly, but this clip probably took around 25 minutes. Which, by the way, if you have more nuanced questions about any of this stuff, Scotty offers live Q&A calls in the Creator Secrets community on School. He shows everything from creating AI influencers like myself to content automation and professional monetization so you can maximize your earnings. He also covers the best AI niche categories and the best tools to create anything you can imagine, along with all the prompt resources and workloads for professional AI filmmaking. The link for this will be down in the description below. All right, so now that you understand kind of the basic workflow and the basic functionality of design, let's talk about some of the other really cool things that it can do. Okay, so in this case, I have this picture of Kira. She's running through this horde of zombies, but she's looking a little relaxed here. She's not looking too afraid. And so all I have to do here, I'm gonna click the expression button right here. And now I can choose which face. Obviously, I'm gonna choose Kira. And now it's gonna pop open all of these expression settings that I can play around with. So first thing I'm gonna do here is open her eyes a bit more so she's looking a little shocked, a little afraid. And I'll make it so she's looking off to the right a little bit. And so you get the idea. You can just go through and play around with these different expressions. And so after doing that, here's what I ended up with right here. I'll click done. And now we can see her expression is a little bit more congruent with this scene. Jumping into YouTube right here, I've been seeing a lot of these types of videos going viral where there's basically video game characters reimagined or video game characters in real life. Let's take a look. Okay, so you get the idea. So let's try something similar using these different Pokemon characters and try to create, you know, Pokemon in real life. Okay, so what I'll do here is open up a new project and we'll do this one 16 by nine and I'll bring in my picture right here. So this one, we're gonna be doing uh, this one of Pikachu. And in this case, I'm gonna come over here to image to image. We'll come up to style and I'll come down to realistic. I'll choose this one over here on the right. This one's pretty cool because it will automatically create a prompt for me if I click this button. And we'll just go ahead with that and see what we get. 
And so now, like always, I have some different options that I can choose from right here. So out of these, I think I like this one the best. I'll go ahead and place this one on the canvas. And then once again, I'm gonna come over to the AI video. And here, I'll just keep it on Kling 1.6 Pro. In the prompt, I'm just gonna paste in the animal shoots lightning out of its body. And let's see what happens with that. Okay, and after waiting for that, here's what we got right here. So pretty good. I'll go ahead and download that clip. All I did here was bring my original image right here into Premiere Pro. You can obviously do this on CapCut or any editor of your choice. And then I have the video clip right here. So I'm basically just gonna put these next to each other and I'll just throw some sort of transition on there. We'll try the Rippler. And so basically what it's gonna look like is this right here. So right here, I have this picture of Kira walking down the street, but I don't really want her to be wearing this blue dress. Instead, I want her to wear this dress right here. And so this time I'm going to create a new project again. We'll go to nine by 16. And here I'll just go ahead and drag in the image that I already have right here. I'll come over to AI editor. And this time we wanna to go to insert object. So now under the reference object, I wanna choose this other girl with this other dress and I'll paste my prompt here, giving a short little description of the dress. And this time I'll switch over to the brush and just paint in where this dress should be. So maybe something like that, let's give it a try. Okay, and so now once again, we have these different options that I can choose from here. I think this one is pretty good, so I'll go ahead and place that one on the canvas. And again, this was the reference image right here, so I think it did a really good job taking this outfit and putting it on Kira. Obviously, this comes in really handy if you want your character to have a very specific outfit, or if the outfit needs to be consistent across multiple different scenes or settings, or of course, if you're trying to model or promote or sell a certain clothing item or any item for that matter, this feature is extremely useful. Of course, I can make all kinds of other modifications to this image if I want. If I click the AI editor again, this time we'll just go to local edit and I'll just trace around her eyes right here and we'll say add sunglasses. Okay, and so here are the different options here and I think this one actually looks pretty good. I'll go ahead with this one. And of course you also have other tools like the AI eraser. Now I should also note that you have a lot of the same tools that you can access right from the menu at the top right here as well. Let's go ahead and choose the AI eraser and I'm just going to erase this bag out of here. Okay, so I'll click generate and let's see what happens here. Okay, there we go. So now I have these different options and probably this one is the best right here. Of course, the hand is looking a little strange so I could obviously use the hand repair to fix that or I can click the background remover so now it will create Kira with a transparent background on a new layer. Now again, I can come over to the layers and I can turn these other layers to be visible or not. So now turning off all the other layers, we have this image of Kira with a transparent background. I'll go ahead and turn this layer off and turn this layer back on. So now we have this image again. The next thing that is very, very useful is if you're trying to change the aspect ratio from like Instagram or TikTok, but you wanna make a YouTube version of that, you can come right here to generative expand. And now I can change the aspect ratio to 16 by nine, which would be for YouTube. I can obviously type in a prompt if I wanna see something specific, or if I just leave it blank, the AI is gonna decide what to fill in on the margins. So let's see what we get here. Okay, so just like always, we have some different options to choose from, and I think maybe this one looks the best. I'll go ahead and set this one on the canvas. And just like that, we now have a 16 by nine aspect ratio that I can start messing around with to create a YouTube version. So those are really the main things that I use design for. However, there are a bunch more tools here. So feel free to pause the video or rewatch this little section if you wanna see this list of you know the different tools and features that it offers. Again, I'll have the link to design below this video if you wanna check it out. That's pretty much it for this one and I will see you in the next video.